I made a team with uh, this new yellow Pokemon that everyone's been talking about. Mega Beedrill. I wanted to make a Mega Beedrill team because, I don't know, because it's the goddamn coolest thing I've ever seen. Do I need to explain myself to you? If you gave me, like, a crayon when I was eight years old and asked me to draw the dopest shit I could think of, you'd get a Mega Beedrill. It would just also have Cloud Strife Sword and those, those like, fucked up Digimon wings that have a bunch of holes in them, but it would basically be a Mega Beedrill. It would have all of the key design components, which is mostly just that every quadrant of its body is deadly. That's that's something Mega Beedrill is really good at, is radiating danger in every direction. What it's not very good at is the video game part of Pokemon, but that's okay, that's fine. Just use five good Pokemon. And then it doesn't matter if one of them is really bad, because that's like, what, that's like 15% of your team? Who gives a shit about that? That's fine. I lose 15% of my body weight every day through constant weeping. But doctors say I'm still technically alive. I found that Weavile is a pretty good partner for Mega Beedrill, because they both have really pointy hands. Whenever you inevitably U-turn off of, like, a Zapdos or a Lando T with Beedrill, you go into Weavile, and then a thousand percent of the time, they're going to think that your choice banded. So you just use Swords Dance on the Switch, and then I'm like pretty sure that a plus two knockoff kills Toxapex. If it doesn't, you're not gonna have a very fun battle. Mega Scizor and Celesteela also like to switch into Weavile, and you'd think that they like to switch into Mega Beedrill, but no one good is actually going to just hard switch them into it because they know you're just gonna U-turn into the Magna Zone. But with Weavile, you can kind of force them to come in and then just take the training bra off and then hard double switch into the Magna Zone. Which is on the team, because I carefully considered all of my options. And when thinking about the synergy that any potential Pokemon could bring to my team, I realized that none of my other options were a fucking Magna Zone. Lando T is pretty good. <laughs> Next. Tapu Fini gives you Defog, which you super desperately need. For Revile and Beedrill, and it's also the only thing that stops you from just losing to Ash Greninja. But probably the most important thing about it is that it gives you Misty Terrain, and since none of the rest of my Pokemon were very good at winning yet, might as well just use a fucking Hawlucha. It doesn't matter if Mega Beedrill beats nothing if I use Hawlucha, which just beats everything. You lose pretty badly to other Halucha, so just run a shitload of speed EVs on your Halucha to speed creep it. And that's how you deal with that. You also get 6 0 by Mega Pinsir, and I don't really know how to deal with that. Oh wait, no, I think I have an idea. What you want to do is, you want to use a good team that doesn't have a fucking Mega Beedrill on it. What's your favorite thing about Greninja? Is it his horrible tongue? Is it his horrible ears? Is it that sometimes he turns into a horrible little man. My favorite's probably that he's he's two different Pokemon that look the same and have the same name. And also one of them is 18 different Pokemon. Because, you know, I think that promotes a really intricate cat and mouse game between the two players. As one of them desperately tries to piece together the puzzle of which specific Greninja their opponent is using. And my god, I've done it! Through tactical espionage, I've acquired the information that he's using Scarf Protean. So, Tapu Bulu almost always gets a kill whenever it comes in against this team, because the best switch in is Mega Beedrill. But thankfully, Magnazone was completely useless against this guy's team, so I could just go ahead and sack my steel type based on instinct and fear and it was pretty much okay because this guy had no natural prey for magnezone on his team so surely it would starve in the coming season oh damn is it time rules of nature and they run when the sun comes up so i could have i could have accomplished the same thing there by just going into weavile against the tapu bulu originally and that I wouldn't have had to launch like a really circuitous plan with Landorus that was 
like accomplished the same thing, but just involved more steps that could have gone wrong. But if I had just gone into Weavile originally, then I wouldn't have been able to click Stealth Rock with Landorus. So I did what I had to do so that Dad wouldn't put away the belt and get out the hammer. I had to click Protect to find out that he was going to use U-Turn. Because how else would I know that he was going to use the best move in the game by far? I clicked Stealth Rock twice in a row. Kind of to protect it from getting defogged, but mostly just because, like, at this point in my life, I've already clicked Stealth Rock more times than I've told my mom I love her. So I might as well just make my ratio a little stronger before I die. Cat versus Bird is notably, like, the most skewed matchup in history, so that guy Zapdos didn't really stand a fucking chance there. I guess Frog is a pretty strong counterpick. Frog with Scarf. Wait a minute, wait, where does where does Greninja wear the Scarf? Because he's already got one, like his tongue is the Scarf. So does he wrap it around like the girth of the tongue or what? Oh, I guess he can like wear it, like he wears it on his neck already. And then his tongue goes around that. That's insane. Greninja has the potential warmest neck available of all Pokemon and overused. Do you think Smogin will accept that as an argument for why Greninja deserves to be S-ranked in OU? This guy is so fucking scared of Weavile, by the way. His adaptation to me clicking Swords Dance was just to, like, bait me into just killing him every time instead. It's like, he'll never have a chance to set up if he's just too busy oko me. I guess he didn't know that Mega Slowbro was the hardest counter to Weavile available in the game today. I kind of wanted to end this game in a cooler way than me just clicking Taunt with my full health Tapu Fini. What I really wanted to do was click U-Turn a few more times with Mega Beedrill, so that maybe Killer Needle would have actually gotten a kill in this game, instead of just getting a theoretical kill, but in actuality just like keeping me in a good position through the power of fear and suggestion in this game that I was already winning anyway, but I... fuck it. That's still better than Mega Beedrill did for me on average. With our powers combined, me and this guy have almost one complete blue team. The worst thing about OU by far is that Landorus isn't blue. I lead with Tapu Fini because I forgot for a second that Tapu Koko 6 0s this team by trying almost as hard as I try to meaningfully contribute to society. So I kind of have to play this game of grab ass for a second, and then I end up doing the the classic doing the same thing twice, which becomes the smart thing because the other guy expects you to do the actual smart thing of just switching Lando into the Volt Switch, which means that I can click Corkscrew Crash here, which is actually so cash for this team because it means that you get to do this shit all the time where Lando's try to revenge kill you and you just kill it for Beedrill, which means that the average team then only has about three Mega Beedrill hard counters instead of four. I went into Weavile there because it's not very useful against his team and that was the best option select for whatever Charizard he had because if it was Charizard X then he could only get one Dragon Dance before he had to kill me. And if it was Charizard Y, then I would have known to click X because I wasn't winning this game. Exit stage, pursued by B. Fun fact, those two turns right there are the longest uninterrupted stretch of this battle where a fucking terrain isn't up on the battlefield. My favorite thing about desperately looking for backgrounds that look good with this showdown skin, like I'm trying to find fucking King Solomon's mines, is that every team has two and a half Tapus on it, so you never actually get to see the fucking background anyway. It's awesome. It's awesome to the max. Let the record show that Mega Beedrill is the wall I need to stop this Life Orb Gunshot Greninja from sweeping the rest of my team. All around me are familiar faces. Cool. If only Mega Beedrill was composed of even more blades than Maybe she would have had the strength to Oko this Charizard. 
but I guess she didn't need to, because I still have the best Pokemon in the tier on my team to go ahead and, and clean it up for her. If I teched Earthquake onto Halucha instead of Stone Edge, then that would solve the Tapu Koko problem, and it also would have single-handedly swept the rest of this dude's team. Because, you know, I think that's the biggest problem with this team, is that all of the good Pokémon I had to use to win at least every third game don't quite carry the team hard enough. Let the record show that, that the reason Dick Nose is whooping this dude 86 so hard is because Killer Needle pursued the Latios, which would have stopped me from just clicking Earthquake. So yeah, I would say that that's probably Mega Beedrill's greatest strength in general, is that it lets you win games by clicking Earthquake with Landorus Therian. Alright, so this one is a long one. Which is to say that it's longer than exactly 24 turns, so go ahead and strap in. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this turn one Tapu Fini Trinity that I've got going on before immediately coming to the same conclusion that every Sun and Moon player made week two, which is that Tapu Fini doesn't actually do anything. I don't know what the fuck that substitute was supposed to accomplish, especially because this guy knew that I was Z-move because he knockoffed me, which removes the only utility it could have possibly had, which is if that guy thought I was Choice Scarf and made the 5,000 IQ play of hard countering me by switching into Ferrothorn. Ten years from now, I'll still be waking up in a cold sweat from memories of this goddamn Tornadus. It single-handedly prolongs this battle by, like, 20 turns. I'm so mad that people just, like, remembered recently that, hey, Tornadus Therian, it's pretty good. It's like between that and people halfway through the generation realizing that Hawlucha was the best fucking Pokemon in the tier. It's like we're all coming to terms with the fact that we can give our heart to another bird after we all lost Talonflame and swore that we'd never feel that pain again. This guy's Tornado sure was having a really hard time killing my Magnezone. And also his Ferrothorn is the only thing stopping Beedrill from just sweeping his team. Hey guys, make sure that I don't just get blackout drunk and sack my Magnezone to his Tapu Koko. Oh wait, I forgot, I don't have any friends. So I guess the theme for today is using the fear to Swords Dance after a Defog. Except this time, it was so much worse of an idea, and I defo should have just gone for like the Dry Icicle Crash because then it would have actually done something to the Clefable, and he has so many ways for this to not be a problem. But I don't regret it. Because I just, I just love the goddamn green numbers, okay? Don't take this away from me. Hey, will you look at that? The third Greninja to cross our path this day. Three frogs is a good omen, to be sure. The harvest this year will be quite bountiful. Fuck yeah, dude. I love 90 accuracy. I love 90 accuracy because the pain reminds you that the good things in life aren't even really that good either, and God is dead. I mean, I love Pokemon. What's your favorite thing about Pokemon? My favorite thing is uh, it's probably the creatures. Killer Needle followed Tornadus all the way to hell, by the way. And hence, is the best Pokemon I've ever used. And I do expect all further discourse between you and I to recognize that fact. So hey, uh, do you want to see some shit? Are you ready for the absolute worst Stealth Rock ever clicked? I'm not, I'm not proud of it. But, uh, do you expect me to just not click Stealth Rock? Clicking Stealth Rock is all that gives me respite from the insatiable void within me. So, since this guy used the absolute most forbidden technique in all of Smog and OU, which is not just switching your Ferrothorn into every fucking move, it's actually here to hard counter me after the first, like, third of the game. So, I'm gonna... 
I'm I'm gonna not have a have a great time here real quick. I kind of just wanted his Ferrothorn to just kill me with Power Whip so that I could try to set up on it with Halucha. But since he goes out into Skull Fable, I need to use my big sexy brain real quick, and I need to utilize Beedrill's greatest strength, which is that it's really good at dying very quickly, so that you can just go into your Pokemon that actually win the game for you. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a quick Swords Dance off this Ferrothorn after the double switch. And I'm not gonna front, I'm not gonna lie, and I'm not proud of it, but I did count the cards on this one. I ran the calc to see if Drain Punch would kill this Clefable. And you know what? I also happened to learn that I got the softest acrobatics possible on it, so I don't, I don't, I don't give a, a fudge what you think about me, okay? So I would say those are my greatest strengths, and that's why I'd be a good fit in your company, sir.